ジ様が、うん、これも定め Hey, hey, Mole Gamers, we're back. Today we're taking a look at Dinner Live 5 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Vita. So, how's this game stack up? Well, let's find out. First up, if you're not familiar with the series, Dead or Alive has been one of the pinnacle fighting games since the late 90s. Uh, starting with Dead or Alive 2 on the Dreamcast, the original Dead or Alive wasn't much to look at. The problem with Dead or Alive so far is, is that the game has really been softcore porn, trying to disguise itself as a serious fighting game. With their new Dead or Alive slogan, I am a fighter. They're trying to break that mold, but they're still doing quite a bit, like over and down the women, to appeal to the softcore porn addicts. That being said, Dead or Alive features a very sound fighting system. Uh, just like Virtua Fighter 5, which has gone through many refinements, Dead or Alive now features more of a combo system, and they've really gotten technical, which is, is a huge step forward. Whereas before you were able to just button mash for the most part and experience quite a bit of success, now you actually have to learn the characters and learn the system. And the game does this by having you play through story mode. And story mode has you uh, playing through a few events where you have to reach certain trials, like throwing opponents, stuff like that. Uh, story mode, although this is the only place you're actually going to get a story, is actually comprehensible this time. It tells you what's going on in the world of Dead or Alive. Great addition. It's about time tech when you really learn your lesson. So, how does Dead or Alive play? Well, you have your punch, kick, and free button. Although they say there's a throw button, realistically throws just punch and free at the same time. Your free button is all your counters and stuff like that, which, <laughs> good luck predicting your opponent's moves in this one. Uh, punch and kick are going to be the main staples of the game, in which case, yeah, rock and sock and robots again. But that's not all they're doing with it. The backgrounds are now interactive. As you can see here, I'm getting pwned by that car. Ouch, that hurt right there. But it's a great way to finish a fight. And many stages have interactions. The cliffhangers are still there where you can throw someone off the roof, but they're much harder to get in this game. Uh, whereas before, you could pretty much just back up and oh, oh, I'm falling off the edge of something. Now it takes quite a bit of work. New to the series, they're adding the crossover of the Virtua Fighter characters. Akira Yuki, Sarah Bryant, and Paichan all appear in Dead or Alive 5. I'm not sure how they work this out with Sega, but uh, it is it is an interesting crossover. The problem I have is, is here I'm playing as Akira, he does not play like Virtua Fighter. I had quite a bit more success in Virtua Fighter 5 and just that series in general playing as Akira. Uh, playing here, he feels like a fish out of water versus now Sara, uh, excuse me, Sarah Bryant, she is a lot more natural in this game. Uh, her fighting style is more rush based and so you'll have quite a bit more success with her. Pi is Pi. I mean, she works and she doesn't, so hey, have fun with it. The question to ask right now is if this game is worth buying. And it's a mixed bag here, because if you have PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, fun. it's a fun fighting game. It's running at full 720p. You're going to love that. The problem that I'm finding, though, is... is Although Sony has it now where you can get the Vita version and you can have cross-play, um, basically synchronizing your progress between your Vita and your PlayStation 3, uh, you have to pay an additional 40 bucks to get it on Vita. Unless you're just buying it now, in which case uh, it's an additional $20. But still, you're paying for the game twice. I mean, what's been going on with cross-play games is, is, hey, you buy the PlayStation 3 version, you get the Vita version for free. That's been a great model because it's encouraged people to have a Vita. And yes, I'd pay an additional 10 bucks, 20 bucks. I've owned the game for quite a while, so I don't really want to repay for the same game to have it on my Vita. So again, from a gamer standpoint, we're looking at a very solid fighter. Um, the problem I see with the system, though, is is that there is no recovery. In Virtua Fighter, if you get juggled, knocked in the air, stuff like that, you at least have a brief second where you can hit you can hit all three buttons and up to recover. In Dead or Alive 5, if you are playing against a superior player, they will just rock you into the ground. There's nothing you can do about it. You will get pwned, and that absolutely sucks. So without that recovery, it lacks a little bit. Otherwise, it's classic Dead or Alive, few improvements to the system, but not enough to make it feel like less of a Dead or Alive game. From a moral standpoint, uh, parents, you may not want your kids playing this game. Apart from the fact that it is fighting, which I personally don't have any issue with, and my kids and I play fighting games. But the problem with Dead or Alive 5 is, is that they haven't stripped out the sexuality yet. 
They still have over-endowed female characters touching themselves and stuff, doing all sorts of sexual poses when they win. It's still softcore porn trying to pass off as a fighting game. Uh, Tecmo really has to overcome this barrier, because until they do, you're still looking at an M-rated game. So if morally, this may be one to not let your, your kids play.